Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I have a book haul. Now, this is my first book haul in a while. Um, it's not because I haven't been getting books. I've definitely been getting books. Um, but I've just neglected putting a haul together. Um, I will not be catching you all up with everything that I bought because that would be a little bit unruly. But I do have some used books that I've gotten recently. A few of these are from a small Better World Books haul, but the vast majority of them are from a used bookstore trip. I think the last time that I went to the used bookstore in question, or any used bookstore, was probably December 2019, possibly January 2020, which makes sense because we're in the middle of a pandemic. But I got vaccinated, um, and I was able to go and meet up with Nico, uh, who I've met online within the past year, and we got to hang out buy books. It was a super great time. So I'm going to talk about books that I got then. I'm going to go through them in alphabetical order by title. First, I have All American Boys um, by Jason Reynolds and Brandon Keeley. This is a YA book that tackles issues of police brutality and racism. Jason Reynolds is really highly regarded, so I'm excited to finally get into some of his works. Next is The Celluloid Closet, Homosexuality in the Movies by Vito Russo. This is kind of a queer, like, essential, if you're looking at queer culture. There's actually a documentary of it, which I have seen. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I will be reading the specific copy. Um, it's not in the worst conditions by any means. It's clearly old. Um, I am slightly worried about the cover coming off, like if I like bend it and move it and stuff because it, just the way that it feels to open. But the reason that I got it, um, first of all, it was only $1.50. But second of all, it's signed, I'm not Joanne or Pam, but that's still really exciting. Um, so I'm glad that I have this. I don't know if I'll be reading this copy, and I certainly won't be marking it up, uh, but I'm stoked about it. Next, I got The Chalice and the Blade, Our History, Our Future by Rianne Eastler. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure what this is about. This is one of those where, like, I recognize the titles, and it was only 75 cents, so I went ahead and got it. Um, it's a feminist studies book. I think it's going to talk about, like, culture and religion. Um, and that sort of thing, looking at misogyny. Next, we've got The Feature of the Race by Henry Louis Gates Jr. and Cornell West. This is another one where I wasn't 100% sure what it was about when I picked it up, but I saw Cornell West, who I have read and really enjoyed. I saw Henry Louis Gates Jr., who I have not read, but I've seen a lot um, of his works, kind of just in general, so... It was a little under $3, so I picked it up. From the back of the book, it looks like it's going to be looking at class differences within the black community um, and kind of the relationship between the upper and lower class. I could be wrong, but I'm looking forward to reading other stuff by Cornell West, so I'm still stoked about it. The next book that I have is one of the ones from my Better World Books order. That is Honor Girl by Maggie Thrash. This is a graphic memoir that I've been recommended by one of my friends a number of times, um, and I've also seen a couple of people online talk about it. So I've finally gotten it. I really love graphic memoir, um, so this should be good. Next, I got Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. Um, this is one that I've seen people talk about here and there. Mira Grant is a pen name, and she writes under her regular name and her pen name. Um, there are so many different books, um, and I haven't read any of her stuff, even though I've heard people talk about it here and there, but I saw this hardcover, it was only $5, and, um, Nico said that I needed to read this, uh, and it was a standalone rather than a whole series, which is what some of her other stuff is, um, and I'm really better at standalones. I know that there's, like, a, a prequel to this, I think, which is kind of hard to get anyways, um, so, I don't know a ton, a ton about the plot, but I know that it's horror and there are mermaids. Next, we're going back into nonfiction again. 
And this book is partly centered around the experience of a man who was in the Japanese internment camp. Uh, but it kind of, at least from my understanding of the book jacket, it kind of uses his experience and the history around it to talk about how interracial solidarity impacted um, the movements around uh, civil rights and stuff like that. So, uh, this sounded pretty interesting. I haven't heard anything about this book, uh, but it seemed like important history and it was only 50 cents. After that, we're going back into fantasy um, with Octavia Butler. This is all three of the books in Lilith's Brood, so that's Dawn, Adulthood Rights, and Imago. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the plot is um, or what it focuses on, but I would really like to read more Octavia Butler, and this was three books in one for only six dollars. Next I have the Lost Tales of Gahul by um, I, Catherine Lasky did the Guardians of Gahul book, but I think Catherine Hong wrote part of this or helped with part of this. I'm not super sure the details, but I think this is supposed to be like some of the mythology that's held within the Guardians of Gahul series, which um, is a book series that I really, really loved as a kid. I don't think I've read it since I was like 12, but I still got this book because I'd like to read it. I might reread the rest of the series first eventually. Don't wait up on that. Um, but I couldn't not get it. Next, we have another book from the Better World Books order, um, and that is The Hundred Knights of Hero. This is set in kind of like a fantastical Middle Ages sort of a setting. I think that one of the girls is like in an arranged marriage sort of situation and then falls in love with the other girl, I think is kind of the premise. I just know that it's a graphic novel, it's got fantasy elements, and it's gay. That's really all that I need to know. Next we have Ordinary Girls by Jakira Diaz. This is a um, memoir that I've been eyeing for a while. Uh, we have it at the bookstore that I work at and while I do get an employee discount. It is not as good as three dollars. Plus this is used and that's like good for the environment and whatnot. In this she talks about her family who is splitting up um, as well as her experience being Puerto Rican and queer and kind of dealing with those um, identities while not having support. That's kind of my understanding at any rate. I think this is also going to talk to a certain extent about mental health as well. Um, so it should be a really interesting memoir. Next, I got a book without a book jacket, but that's okay. This is The Space Between by Nico Tortella. This is another memoir that I've, like, seen and been interested in, but just haven't gotten because there's, there are a lot of memoirs that I've seen and I'm interested in. But this memoir is about a non-binary person and is talking about their experience with sexual and gender fluidity. Next, I have Steven Universe. Um, I've read one other Steven Universe comic, and of course it was super cute. I like Steven Universe. I'm not caught up with the show, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so I've got Steven Universe, Too Cool for School. This next book is the reason that I made the Better World books uh, purchase to begin with, or it's like the first book that I found. Um, which then prompted me to pick out a couple of other things because I have a problem. Um, but that is Super Mutant Magic Academy by Jillian Tamaki. I've read Skim by Mariko and Jillian Tamaki, and I think I had kind of mixed feelings about it, but overall it was a good book. I've read other Mariko Tamaki books and have enjoyed it, or I've at least read Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me multiple times. Um, but I wanted to see what some of Jillian Tamaki's stuff was. Um, and this I specifically got because I was trying to find a superhero book um, for the Queer Lit Readathon, which is happening um, in June. But I specifically wanted a superhero book with a queer woman. And with this book, as you know, you could probably gather by the title, it's like a school of mutants. Um, so I'm not really sure how big the superhero element plays or like what ends up happening. 
but the Queer Comics Archive um, said that it was a superhero book, and I wanted to read more Julian Tamaki, so I got it. Then the final book in this haul is Ziggy, Stardust, and Me, which is a YA book set in the 70s, I believe, but it's kind of coming to age and dealing with your sexuality, that sort of thing. Um, but I'm really interested to see what it's like, especially with the 1970s setting. So that's it. Those are all of the used books that I've gotten over the past week or so. If you've read any of these or think that I should prioritize any of them, let me know about it in the comments. And thank you all so much for watching. Bye.